Good morning and welcome to this service of story and song of the First Baptist Church in Beverly. Welcome on this Sunday after Christmas as we who walked the Advent journey, perhaps feeling like the people who walked in too much darkness, have now journeyed together to the manger on Christmas Eve. We have welcomed the gift of God's love born into our world and born into our hearts anew. We have seen the breaking through of God's light as Christmas morning dawned. And now we gather again here in this time, drawn together by God's spirit, drawn together by our love for that tiny child in the manger, drawn together by the call of a God of love who compels us to continue our journey forward together. My name is Reverend Julie Flowers. I am one of the ministers who has the joy of serving First Baptist Church in Beverly. And in this service of worship, I will be joined in worship leadership by my colleagues in ministry, Reverend Kent Harrop and Reverend Jamie Crumley. We also will be joined in this worship service and the two to follow by Mary Jodice, who is the organist at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Marblehead. Mary will be serving in our worship services with us, filling in for our music director, Dr. Esther Chang, who will be enjoying a few weeks of well-deserved vacation time. So welcome to Mary and to the musicians from her church family, who will be sharing with us their gifts and their talents in our worship services. We are so pleased to have them here with us in this way. This is a service of story and song. This is an opportunity for us to sing beloved carols of the season, to hear beautiful music, and to be reminded through moments of poetry, scripture, and story readings, what the message of Christmas is, what love incarnate in that tiny child is all about what it means when Emmanuel, God with us, is born into the world once more. Christmas carols represent a unique moment in the history of Christianity, in the trajectory of the early church. You see, initially, people, common people, were not allowed to read the scriptures, to read from the Bible, or to interpret the sacred text. That was a responsibility and a privilege reserved for priests and church leaders alone. But outside the walls of the church, out in the streets of God's big beautiful world, the people could sing the story. The people could sing the song that was written on their hearts and nothing, nothing could hold that back. And that is how Christmas carols came to be. They were a way for all the people to own this story that is truly a story for us all. So when you sing along in this service of story and song, you are joining your hearts with those of people stretching back over the ages in embracing and welcoming the Christ child and singing and proclaiming that story of God's abundant love incarnate for the whole world. When you think about it that way, singing Christmas carols seems like a pretty revolutionary, pretty amazing, pretty godly act. So let's sing out in this service. Let's join our voices across distance. Let's sing a song of good news and great love and great joy for the whole world. So now we prepare our hearts and our minds and we come together in worship. Mary Oliver was the poet laureate of the United States and a prolific poet who lived in Provincetown for over 50 years. Her poems were inspired by the rugged beauty 
of that part of the world. And also inspired by her coming to faith later in life. And I offer this poem as we look towards a new year. And I offer this poem on this, the first Sunday of Christmas, as we seek to open our hearts, minds, and imaginations to the ways in which God's Spirit is speaking into our lives. It's about noticing. It's about giving thanks. And so as a gift to you this day, I offer this poem, Making the House Ready for the Lord. Dear Lord, I have swept and I have washed, but still nothing is as shining as it should be for you. Under the sink, for example, is an uproar of mice. It is the season of their many children. What shall I do? And under the eaves and through the walls, the squirrels have gnawed their ragged entrances. But it is the season when they need shelter. So what shall I do? And the raccoon limps into the kitchen and opens the cupboard while the dog snores, the cat hugs the pillow. What shall I do? Beautiful is the new snow falling in the yard and the fox who is staring boldly up the path to the door. And still I believe you will come, Lord. You will when I speak to the fox. When I speak to the sparrow, the lost dog, the shivering sea goose, know that really I am speaking to you whenever I say, as I do all morning and all afternoon, come in, come in. On this, the first Sunday of the season of Christmas, we open our hearts, minds, and imaginations in prayer. And I'd like to begin with this uh, brief poem by Pamela Hawkins. Come, draw us in, hold us together, while we greet the birth of the light of lights, 
the one who will guide us into the world anew. It has been such a challenging year in 2020. So much pain, so much disorientation, so much change that we've had to go through. And so as we look to a new year, we do so with a sense of anticipation and hope, knowing that the light of lights, the birth of Jesus will be with us, in us, around us, and guiding us into the year to come. So please pray with me. God of grace and God of hope, guide us, comfort us, strengthen us, grace us, we pray, with the gift of your courage. Grace us as we move into a new year with the presence of your light and of your love and of your hope. Teach us how to live and how to love, how to forgive, how to be both blessed and a blessing to others. We thank you, loving God, for your faithfulness to us during this challenging year of 2020. How you have been faithful with, to us and have accompanied us and sometimes carried us through the tough patches. You've done so individually and collectively, and we are grateful. And now we offer the prayer, which Jesus taught to his disciples so long ago, which through the power of the Spirit, Jesus speaks into our lives to renew us this very day. As together, we pray and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And may God's people say, Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, the first chapter, verses 1 through 9. I will be reading this morning from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, but if you are following along with this reading at home, I invite you to use whatever translation is most familiar or most comfortable for you. In these words of scripture, we hear the gospel writer explaining what it is for God to take on human form, to become incarnate, to become like us. Emmanuel, God with us, come into the world. So I invite you to hear now these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of these holy words. Amen.
This is a story for kids and for the young at heart. Have you ever been afraid? Have you ever been a little bit scared? My guess is on that first Christmas, Mary and Joseph, as new parents, were worried over the well-being of their little baby. Because they were homeless. They gave birth, Mary gave birth in a barn, surrounded by the smells and the sounds of the barnyard. It's not what Joseph or Mary expected. It wasn't what they had dreamed of when they would bring their child into the world, but here they were. They could hear the cows mooing. They could hear the donkey braying, the sheep baaing. And they wondered, what would our child's future be like? Have you ever been scared? I know I have, especially when I'm trying something new. I remember when I was about six or seven years old and I was learning how to ride a bicycle. And my dad came alongside me and he said, Kent, I will hold on to the side of your bicycle and all you need to do is start pedaling as hard and as fast as you can and I will run alongside you and when I think you're ready, I'll let go and you just keep pedaling. And my heart was pounding. I was really nervous. But I said, okay. So I climbed up on my bicycle and I started to pedal slowly at first. My dad running alongside me, holding on to the side of the bicycle. And then I pedaled faster and faster. And then finally my dad said, Kent, keep pedaling. And so I did, and I pedaled away from my dad, and my bike began to wobble, and I thought I might fall, and my heart was pounding. But then I got control of the bicycle, and I kept on pedaling. And this big smile came across my face. We all get scared sometimes. We all get nervous sometimes. But just like with Joseph and Mary, we know that God is with us, that God was watching over Joseph and Mary as they were raising their child, blessing them, and God watches over us when we're scared too. Well, a long while after I learned how to ride that bicycle for the first time, I was with my buddy Dana and we were in France and I was about 24 years old. And we were bicycling for two months in France. And we were in northern France where the mountains are steep and they drop down steeply. So we were going up and down and up and down those mountains and those hills in northern France. And one day I was pedaling and it was really, really hot out. And my legs were getting tired and tireder. And I thought, I need to get off my bike and I need to just start walking up that hill. And just before I stopped pedaling, there was a farmer in the field. And the farmer yelled to me in French, Bon courage! Bon courage! You know what that means? If Doris Ann Vossler is listening, she knows what that means because she's a French teacher. Bon courage, it means good courage. And what the farmer was saying, keep going, don't give up. You can do it, you can make it to the top of that mountain. And so I kept on pedaling right to the very top of that mountain. And when I got there, a big smile came across my face. Sometimes we get tired, don't we? And sometimes we get scared. But one of the stories of Christmas is that God is always with us. God would be with Mary and Joseph and with the baby Jesus, watching over them and blessing them. And God watches over you and me. So my prayer, my hope, for you on this, the first Sunday of Christmas, 
is that the God who brought Jesus into the world, a gift of love, that that same love will be with you. And so, will you pray with me? Please repeat after me. Thank you, God, for making us. Thank you, God, for your love. That same love which brought Jesus into the world also makes a home in our hearts, too. Amen and woohoo. Merry Christmas, everybody, and Happy New Year. you now to hear the words of the story that we over the years in our church family have simply called the organ was broken this is a story adapted from a true story of how one of the most loved christmas carols of all time came to be born but it also felt like a story that was well worth our hearing particularly this year particularly in 2020, when we have just come through an Advent season that may have felt like walking in too much darkness, when we lived a Christmas Eve and Christmas Day experience that did not perhaps include all of the things we wished, all of the familiar details or the special spaces, or the much-loved people. This is a story of another Christmas Eve long ago, when the details also were not just right, when things were not the familiar way that they had always been, when it seemed like things just weren't working out. And yet out of that reality, God's love and light continued to break through, calling people forward, giving rise to creativity and new ways of living and loving and telling the story of a tiny child born for the whole world. So on this Sunday after Christmas 2020, I invite you to hear the organ was broken. Are you certain it can't be fixed in time? Absolutely certain, Father. I'm sorry, I know it's terrible timing, but your old organ here has been needing repair for so long, it's just given up. There's simply no way I can get it fixed in time for tomorrow. Father Joseph Marr, the priest of the parish of St. Nicholas in Oberndorf, Austria, bowed his head in thought. Here it was late evening on December 23rd, and the organ in his tiny church was broken beyond repair. The following day was that most wonderful of all nights, Christmas Eve, and his small but faithful congregation would arrive for the midnight mass only to discover there would be no music. 
thought saddened him deeply. He looked up into the worried face of the young man who had come to try to fix the organ. It's okay, the priest said kindly. I know you've tried everything to get our organ running again. She's been a good and faithful instrument, but she's old and tired now. I understand that. We'll figure something out for tomorrow. Don't you worry. The repairman shook Father Mar's hand. A very Merry Christmas to you, Father. A very Merry Christmas indeed. After the young man left the church, Father Mar stood in his familiar spot at the front of the sanctuary. His eyes fell on the small but lovely nativity scene there in the front of the church. Darkness was falling outside, yet there was a soft light that shone through the church windows and landed on the scene before him. The scene of a young, loving mother, a proud and protective father, a very special baby. I just can't imagine the midnight mass tomorrow night without music, the priest said aloud to the empty church. There must be something we can do. Later that night, the priest was called out to make an emergency visit to the home of one of the parish families. As he was walking home through the crisp winter night, he paused. He looked up at the beautiful starlit sky and then his eyes fell on his own quiet little parish with love. He spoke aloud in the darkness to no one in particular saying, maybe Bethlehem felt like this on that first Christmas Eve. Suddenly as he spoke, he felt a flood of inspiration fill his soul and his heart and his mind. He hurried home into the rectory and sat down at his desk. Pulling out a pen, he began to write. He wrote and he worked and he crossed out and he made changes and he wrote some more. And when he stood up from his desk, it was with a completed poem for Christmas written out on the page before him. Father Mar slept very peacefully that night. The next morning, very early, he summoned his good friend Franz Gruber to the church. Mr. Gruber was a schoolmaster and a musician, and he also happened to be the church organist and choir director for the parish of St. Nicholas. When he arrived at the church, he found a very excited Father Mar waiting for him. Good morning, Father, he said to his old friend. What has you up so early and so excited on this Christmas Eve? Ready for old St. Nicholas to make his arrival here in Oberndorf? Good morning, Gruber, the priest answered cheerfully. No, no, not at all. The organ, the organ is broken. It's beyond repair even. It's done. It's finished. There's no way we can use it tonight for the midnight mass. With all due respect, Father, that hardly feels like cause for a celebration, said a confused Gruber. The priest handed him a piece of paper. He was so excited, he was nearly jumping up and down. I have a challenge for you, Gruber, a challenge I know you can achieve. Here is a poem I wrote last night. I want you to set it to music. I want you to create music for a guitar accompaniment and two solo voices. We'll perform it tonight at the Midnight Mass. Gruber looked down at the piece of paper with the poem on it. He looked up at his old familiar friend's beaming face. Then he looked back down at the piece of paper. I'm, he began. It's, it's just that, his voice trailed off again. What, asked the priest. I know you can do it. I'm not a composer, the choir director protested. Not at all. I can play music. I can direct choirs. I dare say I even do those things rather well. But I am no composer. For me to put this poem to music good enough to use at tonight's midnight mass on Christmas Eve, that seems impossible. 
All the same, the priest said good-naturedly, why don't you give it a try? Gruber went home with the piece of paper folded over inside of his glove. When he arrived at his house, he took the piece of paper and unfolded it carefully. He smoothed it out. He read the words. They were beautiful in their simplicity, he had to admit. He reached for his guitar and he began to strum, playing with the chords and the notes. When he had finished, he called to his wife. He asked her to listen to something he had been working on for the midnight mass. She listened intently as he played the song for her. When he had finished, she was silent. He looked at her worried. Well, he asked, what did you think? Say something even if it's bad. She was very quiet. Then she said, it's beautiful, it's perfect. You really think so, he asked. Franz, she said very seriously, you and I will die, but this song will live on and on. That night at the midnight mass in the tiny parish of St. Nicholas, the beautiful song was performed for the first time. Gruber played the guitar, and he and Father Mar sang. And so it was that the song that has become the most beloved of all Christmas carols was born. Out of a situation that seemed hopeless came a song of hope. Out of the darkness of a still winter night in Austria came a song that told of God's wonderful light of love breaking through for all people. And that song lives on today, in and through us. And that powerful light of the unending love of God continues to shine on in the darkness. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. this day and all days. May the heavenly peace of a most loving God be with you. The end.
On this, the Sunday after Christmas, I would love to share a poem with you. This poem is called Amazing Peace, a Celebration, and it is by the poet Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou first wrote this poem and read it on December 1st, 2005, at the lighting of the National Christmas Tree. Let us listen together and hear what the words of this poem have to say to us today. Thunder rumbles in the mountain passes and lightning rattles the eaves of our houses. Floodwaters await in our avenues. Snow falls upon snow falls upon snow to avalanche over unprotected villages. The sky slips low and gray and threatening. We question ourselves. What have we done to so affront nature? We interrogate and worry, God, are you there? Are you there really? Does the covenant you made with us still hold? Into this climate of fear and apprehension, Christmas enters. Streaming lights of joy, ringing bells of hope, and singing carols of forgiveness high up in the bright air. The world is encouraged to come away from rancor, come the way of friendship. It is the glad season. Thunder ebbs to silence and lightning sleeps quietly in the corner. Floodwaters recede into memory. Snow becomes a yielding cushion to aid us as we make our way to higher ground. Hope is born again in the faces of children. It rides on the shoulders of our aged as they walk into their sunset. Hope spreads around the earth, brightening all things. Even hate, which crouches, breathing in dark corridors. In our joy, we think we hear a whisper. At first it is too soft then only half heard. We listen carefully as it gathers strength. We hear a sweetness. The word is peace. It is loud now, louder than the explosion of bombs. We tremble at the sound. We are thrilled by its presence. It is what we have hungered for. Not just the absence of war, but true peace. A harmony of spirit, a comfort of courtesy, security for our beloveds and their beloveds. We clap hands and welcome the peace of Christmas. We beckon this good season to wait a while with us. We Baptist and Buddhist, Methodist, and Muslim say, come, peace. Come and fill our world with your majesty. We, the Jew, and the Jainist, and the Catholic, and the Confucian, implore you to stay a while with us, so we may learn by your shimmering light how to look beyond complexion and see community. It is Christmas time, a halting of hate time. On this platform of peace, we can create a language to translate ourselves to ourselves and to each other. At this holy instant, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ into the great religions of the world. We jubilate the precious advent of trust. We shout with glorious tongues the coming of hope. All the earth's tribes loosen their voices to celebrate the promise of peace. We angels and mortals believe
believers and unbelievers, look heavenward and speak the word aloud. Peace. We look at our world and speak the word aloud. Peace. We look at each other and then into ourselves. And we say without shyness or apology or hesitation, peace, my brother, peace, my sister, peace, my soul. These words were which written 15 years ago, and yet they resonate. May we be compelled to look at each other, filled with the peace and the joy and the light that comes from knowing God, and say to one another, peace, peace be with you. And may we feel compelled to look even within ourselves to those dark crevices within us and say to ourselves, peace, my soul. I read the poem, Amazing Peace, a celebration by Maya Angelou. May you also have Amazing peace. Friends, let us now go out into the light. Our hearts overcome with song and our heads filled with the stories of the new life. The word made flesh that has come to dwell among us for a while. And as we go out, May we be filled with the peace, with the hope, with the love and the joy that only God can give us. Amen. Mm -hmm.